Two weeks ago today, I made a video on how to edit landscape photos inside of Lightroom. Now this video was just part one. It showed you how to make basic changes using the basic tab. Today is part two, and I'm gonna be going into more detail with the changes that you will be making. But this time, we're gonna be focusing on how to use color to tell a story in your image and also to change the composition. I think it's first important though, for me to show you the tools that I use to change color with inside of Lightroom. I nearly always start by using the HSL sliders, which is found here. And the reason for this is because you can change a few different things. You can change the U, which is the actual color itself. If I wanted to make the greens here a little bit more towards the yellows, I could simply go onto this slider and push them up and change the color itself. Let's bring that back down. You can also change the saturation, which is how vivid and how vibrant the color is in the photo. So let's use the greens again as an example. If I push them all the way up, you can see how saturated they've become. Now, of course, I don't want them that saturated, so I'm gonna bring them right down. Finally, we have luminance, and this is great because you can change how light and dark your colors appear. Let's stick with the green again. If I was to bring it down, I would be making my greens darker in the image. And then if I was to push it all the way up, I'll be making them lighter. So let's bring them down to zero. You can see from the HSL sliders here, they make subtle changes. And I think that's what I like about them. And it's what I do most of my color changes with. Sometimes I will go along to split toning um, I don't really make a habit of using split toning that much. Um, but what you can do with split toning is you can introduce a color into the image and give it an overall feel and an overall tone. So if I wanted to make this image look, uh, let's say a bit more summery, I could simply come here onto this rectangle. This is gonna bring up the colors. And then if you think of a summer photo or a summer scene, you're gonna think of a nice golden orange color. So I could press here on this golden orange color and you can see that's introduced it into the photo. Now that to me looks too strong. So if you click off or out the rectangle, you can simply go onto saturation. You can drag that up or down and introduce more or less of the effect in. So that's what split toning does. It enables you to make um, an overall change to the tone and feel of your image. So let's just bring that down. Now, very occasionally, I will use the tone curve. I used to use the tone curve a lot, but I don't really use it much anymore. And that's because it make, it's a very powerful tool. And I find that I can make all of my changes with the HSL sliders, and that does a good enough job. Finally, you've got calibration, which I pretty much never use. This is also a very powerful tool. Let me show you what I mean. If I was to push the green up here, you can see it makes drastic changes to the color of the image. Now you might like that kind of thing. That might be something that you're looking for. So if it is, then you can use this tool, but it's not something personally I use myself. And that's because I like to keep the image as close to the original photo that I've taken. Um, I don't really like to make drastic changes to the photo itself. So let's click off calibration. So they're the tools which I use, but the main one I nearly always stick with is the HSL sliders. And that's because it makes a subtle change to the image. So what you can see in front of you right now is a photo which I captured when I visited last week, uh, one of the highest waterfalls in the British Isles. It's a beautiful place. Now I'm really happy with this photo actually. I think it's really nice. This is of the bottom section of the waterfall. Got this lovely focal point here, which is this rock, which has been eroded away over hundreds or thousands of years. And it's enabled the cascading water to come through here and then come down and hit these rocks. It really is a beautiful scene. But when I was there, one of the things that really stood out to me is the autumn colors and they really were so vibrant and really beautiful to look at. 
But when I looked at this image after capturing it, I noticed that you could see it in places, but it hadn't really stood out that much. Nowhere near as much, in fact, as it was when I was there. So this is a great example of being able to change the feel or, or the color in your image. And what I would use would be the HSL sliders for this. So I can come over here onto my HSL section, click down, and what I want to do is I want to bring through them autumn colors. I think the green here is saturated enough and it stands out enough in the image. So what I want to do is actually bring bring out the oranges and the yellows which you associate with autumn. So I'm going to come onto my U slider here and I'm going to really push up these sliders, just get a feel for kind of how they're going to change. And you can see as I'm pushing up the orange, you can see where the orange is. You can see it's actually changing to a red colour. Now I don't really want to change it too much, um, but I do want to make it more saturated, let's say. So I'm just going to bring it up slightly and then I'm going to pop along into saturation and then I'm going to add more saturation to my orange. And you can just see how that pops out the image a little bit more now. And we can do the same with yellows as well. You do find that yellows are closely related to greens and sometimes when you change the yellows it actually affects um, some of the green areas or at least what you think is green in the image anyway. So if I push up the yellows here, you can see that it's actually changing some areas of my green. But I don't mind that too much because if I'm honest with you, my um, Canon lens has captured the greens maybe a little bit more vibrant than they were. Um, so I'm just going to bring this back more to the yellow. And then I'm going to pop along the saturation again. And then I'm going to push the saturation of the yellow up as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can now see... And that's really starting to stand out more. You can see the separations in the colours. The green, the orange and the yellows are, are also starting to pop out the image as well. Now, what I will say is sometimes when you're doing this, you can make changes to other parts of the image as well that you don't really want to change. Now, in the next section, which is part three, I'm going to show you how to make individual changes to certain areas of the photo rather than global changes. So for instance, maybe this water here has been affected by me pushing up the saturation in the orange, and maybe that's a bit more kind of vibrant than I want it to be. So in part three, I'll show you how to change that. But let's stick along the path that we've started with here. If I go along to luminance, this is gonna enable me to change the lights and darks in the image, or should I say the, how light and how dark the color is. So what do I want when I'm looking at this image? I think I'd like the greens to be a little bit darker perhaps, and then the oranges maybe to be lighter. But this may be different when I actually start moving around the sliders. So let me try bringing the greens down a little bit, make them a little bit darker like that. And then let's push up the oranges to make them a bit lighter. Okay, and I quite like the way that looks. I don't think I want to go too light with the oranges, but that really does separate them. It almost makes the green sit back in the image, and then it makes the oranges pop out of the image. So you've got that lovely separation like you would have with dodging and burning the lights and the darks. Okay, so I'm quite happy with the way that's looking now. Now it's always nice to look at the before and after, so I'm going to have a look at this by pressing on the forward slash key. This is the this is the start here, and then this is the after. And I really like what I've managed to do here with the colours, just creating more of the autumn feeling which I actually experienced when I was there. I hope you've all enjoyed part two of this mini Lightroom video series. Now part three will be following, but it probably won't be next week, it will be the following week after. And that's because I have a really exciting adventure ahead, uh, which is tomorrow through to Sunday. And I'm visiting somewhere, I'm not going to tell you any more now, but you should definitely check out next Thursday's instalment uh, and you'll get to see everything that I was doing this weekend. 
Now, if you haven't already, and this is your first time visiting, it would mean a lot to me if you subscribe to the channel. Also, it might benefit you guys because there's lots of tutorials which I've put on here and also lots of photography adventures of me taking photos of beautiful places. Now, whatever you do, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day today and I'll see you all really soon.